My name is Maggie, and I'm in the fifth grade. My class is studying recycling. I know that we can recycle things like paper, cardboard, metal cans, and plastic bottles by putting them into the blue recycling bin. But I want to know more about what happens to them after the recycling truck picks them up. So, I'm at my local recycling center with Mr. Lane. He's gonna give us a tour to see what happens to the things we recycle. Thanks, Maggie. You probably already know what recycling is. It's taking things that have been used and making new things out of them, instead of just throwing them away. At this recycling center, about 350 tons of paper, plastic, and metal is recycled every day. The center is pretty big. It's even larger than a football field. It's also what would be considered a modern recycling center with highly trained specialists and sophisticated equipment doing the jobs of sorting, packing, and shipping recyclable materials. All right, Maggie, this is called the tipping floor. It's so cool. Isn't it? And this is where all of the recyclable material comes after it's picked up at your house or maybe picked up out of business and it's first dumped here. Recycling trucks bring their loads to this part of the center and empty them out to be sorted. A typical recycling truck can hold up to 12,000 pounds of recycling from 700 homes. Heavy equipment then loads the contents onto a conveyor belt. It goes down the line where sorting specialists separate the trash that can't be recycled. As the materials move further down the line, there are also machines to help remove non-recyclable items. So, everything comes in together on that tipping floor, and it's all mixed up there all together. But as it moves down the line, it's actually separated one by one. Like, it's both machines and the people are doing that, right? It really is. It's also important that we don't contaminate our recycling materials with non-recyclable waste. We want only those materials that are recyclable, which are paper, cardboard, metal cans and plastic bottles and jugs. Some of the things that are seen most often that shouldn't have been put in the recycling bin are food, clothes, yard waste, even furniture. These are not recyclable. So when you put recyclables in your bin, they need to be empty, clean, and dry with no food or liquid in them. Just one dirty ketchup bottle could contaminate other recyclables in your bin and in other places along the recycling process. If you remember, there's actually four things we're looking for. Do you remember them? Metal. Like, okay. Um, paper. Yes. Cardboard. Yes. And plastic. Plastic. Good job. So actually the cardboard comes in there and is sorted. Uh -huh. The paper uses these lines itself. The plastic is a line over there, right? And it just goes on and on and on. Yeah, and the metals are further down there like your metal can, like your soda can. Uh -huh. This part of the line is where most of the cardboard gets pulled out so it can be packaged for recycling. You want to make sure your cardboard boxes are clean. You should also flatten them before placing them in your recycling bin. Based on the size and weight of the cardboard, it automatically gets sent to different sorting areas. The line moves on. Sifters continue to shake out materials for recycling. Special machinery called optical sorters and tumblers pull paper products from the line and sort them into large and small pieces. Plastic also gets separated out using equipment specially made for the job. Powerful magnets are used to separate metals from plastic and send them to their correct destination. All of these automated procedures are controlled by the touch of a button using a portable tablet that works anywhere in the facility. So it helps me because if I have a problem on a line way over there, uh -huh. I don't have to walk way over there. Really? I can just... That is crazy. 
At this point, there is another sorting by hand to pick out all the cardboard. Here, the loose plastic bags are suctioned up. Plastic bags get caught in the machinery, which causes delays. They can even damage the machinery. And she'll put it up in that vacuum and suck it right up. Look at that. Oh my God! That is so cool. At the end of the line, paper and cardboard are sent to machines that press the material into big blocked size bundles called bales. These machines can bale up to 50 tons of paper and cardboard an hour. Plastic and aluminum are also pressed into bales. One of the reasons why we pack them in cubes or like a square, right? Is so we can actually stack them one on top of the other. And then we also can put them in a truck trailer and actually ship them. The bales are then bought by companies that will make new products from the materials. These companies will break down the materials further in different ways, like melting the plastic into liquid. That allows them to use the material in making new materials and products, including cars, airplanes, and even clothes. Now I get it. It's what we learn in school about what the recycling symbol means. It starts with everyone placing their empty, clean, and dry recyclables loose in their recycling bins. The recycling truck picks up our recyclables and brings them to the recycling center, where they are separated into paper, cardboard, plastic, and metal. These materials are then used to make new products. When people buy these products made from recycled materials, we complete what's called the recycling loop. Recycling also helps keep our towns and neighborhoods clean, and it makes our air safer for people and animals. Thank you, Mr. Lane, for showing me how our recycling center works. Now I know what happens to the stuff that we put inside of our recycling bin. It turns into products that we use every day. So remember, we can all make a difference in our schools, in our home, and in our town by recycling, and also helping others to become better recyclers. You never know, that soda can might even become a part of an airplane. That's so cool. Thanks, Mr. Lane.